TJ Finley is gone and Auburn lands a top target. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining us today is a little War Report Wednesday action. Mike G of the War Report. We will talk about Jalen McLeod, the newest Auburn Tiger at the Jack position. But first things first, we talk quarterbacks here on this show, and Auburn is down a quarterback yesterday. TJ Finley will enter the portal as a grad transfer, and he will be playing somewhere else. His Auburn career comes to an end, Mike G. Yeah. Listen, if you've been paying attention, this is not a shock to you at all. No, no, it's you, not. Yeah, it's you not. knew you knew this was coming. Uh, listen, he was asked in an interview after a day if Hugh Freeze brought in a quarterback, would he stay or not? Uh, he gave a very auspicious answer, um, and it indicated that he was exploring his options because the team would be exploring their options. Um, guys, this is simple. Despite what you think about T.J. Finley and how he's performed here, um, he's got to do this for him. Right. And sure. uh, there's no other way to look at this. He's got one year left to play. He's got to get something on tape, Zach. He's got to get tape. And, you know, before we started recording, you and I were kind of talking about, you know, what is the best route to that for him? You know, just go someplace where you can be the guaranteed starter. It may be a lower level of football, put up numbers. The NFL likes big quarterbacks. You know, maybe, you know, he can make something happen, you know, from that level. So, you know, wishing him the best. Uh, I think for the most part, while he was here, carried himself. You know, um, uh, fairly well. Uh, you know, he won over the team a year ago. Go, you know that big quarterback battle between yep. Zach Calzada and him and Robbie Ashford. I mean, he and won over the has, team. It still has fans on this team. I think it's so. Still, I think it still so. Has fans on the team. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, sounds like he commanded the locker room more than any of the other quarterbacks. But I think Auburn's looking elsewhere. I don't think Auburn's looking currently on the roster for the next quarterback. So, um. Thank you for TJ Finley. I think he brought a lot of excitement when he committed two years ago, but he is no longer on this. And then look, this is another Brian Harson guy that's off of this roster. As Hugh Freeze and the staff actively fight to flip this roster, this is just kind of another step towards all of that. So do you think this has any impact in regards Auburn pursuing quarterbacks, or do you think this would have happened anyway? This was gonna happen, man. This was the. It was. This was always the way it was gonna happen. Yeah. If you listen to Locked On, if you listen to the War Report, if you listen, all to the this, everydayers out there. Yeah, Mike G and Zach Blackerby. You know, we've been saying this was gonna. This was coming. It was just a matter of when. Sure. Um, and uh, as they get closer, I think it's an indication though that Auburn is getting closer to signing their portal quarterback, right? Um, because mm-hmm. he likely had a conversation with the coaches about where he stands, what their plans are, what they're doing, and what that means for him. So. You know, this is this was this is all part of the design. Right. I'm there with you. I'm there with you. So now how Auburn will fill out this quarterback room. I think it's I think it's gonna be Peyton Thorne, if I had to guess. I think it's gonna be Peyton Thorne or Casey Thompson. The fan base is kind of split right now. In fact, I, it seems like more people are higher on Casey Thompson, but we'll discuss that whenever yeah, you know, that's, when the that's, when, that's when we all, cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, who I mean, who cares? I mean, it's up to what Hugh Freeze wants because it seems like they're both super interested in Auburn. So we'll see. But so now you're looking at transfer quarterback, Robbie Ashford, Holden Gurner, and Hank Brown going into the fall. Once again, assuming Auburn has a quarterback, but I think we all feel pretty good about that now. Uh, yeah. So again, if you're Robbie Ashford, uh, your situation is unchanged. They're they They were all and same for Holden. They were always going to bring in a quarterback. I think Holden's the winner in TJ leaving. Uh, yeah, 100%. Oh, well, I don't know, man. I don't know that he's any more a winner than he was before. Well, he's going to TJ- get more reps. He's going to get more reps because of it. He was oh, he's going to get them anyway because we knew TJ was out of here, right? I guess my point is like, yeah, but I mean, you can't, you can't say that until really like unchanged. he's actually gone though. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you know, I'm just saying we knew this was coming, and so you know the, the 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 mission is the same, the assignment is the same for these guys, right? Uh, continue to try to win the locker room, win the team, show mm-hmm. the coaches that you can be the guy, be Hugh Freeze's definition of an SEC quarterback uh, in the in the summer, 
and then go into fall camp with hopefully that edge on whoever they bring in. And, you know, you know, maybe, you know, with the calls fall, the cards fall where they may, you know, one of these guys comes out with a job. I still have high hopes for Holden Gariner. Um, as somebody who can be really the future of a program, uh, rocket arm, you know, uh, all the football smarts, right, and uh, just a great kid in general. Uh, you know, for Robbie Ashford, you know, I think his window is closing. I think his window is closing to try to win this job here, right? So, I, well, Mike G, I think if it ends up being Peyton Thorne, mm -hmm. when it's all said and done, the transfer from Michigan State. He's got two years left. I think that almost closes the door on Robbie and Holden just from a timeline perspective. Yeah, it's tough, right? Because here's the deal. It is uh, tough. You, you, I still believe the most effective way to build a program is through recruiting. And if you're going to bring in guys who have multiple years of eligibility left, this is why I was never high on Thompson, right? He's got one year left to play, right? And is bringing him him, is he good enough to, to to be worth upsetting the natural flow of your recruiting process at that position, right? Because you got Walker White coming in, who's going to be highly heralded. And yeah. you know, is he going to want to sit behind I think, Payne yeah, Thorne? Sure. Right? I mean, I, I think I think Casey Thompson, a one-year rental type thing, a Band-Aid, would make sense if Walker White was already on campus and he was a true freshman, and then you're able to roll him out as either a redshirt freshman or a true sophomore. I think the timing right now, unless you think Hank Brown could be that guy, which I don't think is out of the question. I think a lot of people have written off Hank Brown. I actually think Hank Brown's a baller, if I'm being honest with you. But regardless, I'm with you. I think the two-year option makes sense for either of them. Get a guy that can come in, start in 2023, and then worst case is he's fantastic and he leaves, you know, um, but probably going to stay two years. I think he'd be a two-year guy. I don't think he's quite good enough to be an NFL-type player. But then after that, you either got Hank Brown, who'd be a red shirt freshman or no, a red shirt sophomore, or you've got Walker, who would be either a red shirt freshman or a true sophomore, depending on how, how much they played. Uh, yeah, like, listen, <laughs> this has to be the era of freshman quarterbacks coming into Auburn, Zach, and actually doing something in the system. Uh, Hugh Freeze has to start a pipeline of quarterbacks. He's got to yeah. be able to convince guys, too, that your turn will come. And when your turn comes, it's it, it will be up to you whether you seize the reins or not, but you and only you. We're not going to go looking for the next flash in the pan in the portal every single year because we trust the talent and the evaluation that we have in the recruiting process, and you are our guy. Right. That is how the better programs are doing it. That's how Auburn's going to have to do it if they want to catch up to the likes of Bama and now LSU and Georgia and anybody else who's killing it in the conference right now. Right. Find guys from high school, convince them to develop them in your program, teach them your system, and convince them to wait their turn, Zach. It's got to be the – I, I agree how, with how you. It's how you build a program. I agree with you. Ironically, ironically, Bama brought in a transfer quarterback, but – Big picture, you were correct. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. you were absolutely Listen, correct. They did it. They did it right for years and years and years. But I guess what <laughs> it's funny that you say that. And finally, they ran out of luck. Yeah, they you struck know. out on two or three different guys that should have been better. Yeah, yeah totally. it happens. It happens, right? And I'm still not convinced that they might not have to turn back to one of those guys during the season. Uh, you know, so we'll see. We'll watch that situation. I'm just saying, like, you know, they, they brought in all these highly held or held guys, and you can't say that Jalen Milrow didn't get a fair shot to win the job, right? I think they wanted him to win it. They wanted him to win it. If yeah. he didn't take it, if you didn't take it in right. the natural succession in that program, it's you, <laughs> right? I think, yeah. I th you know what I mean? Likely it's you. Let me not say that with any definitive, definitive uh, this, but, like, it's – gotcha. I you know you. what I mean? That's how we're I looking at it. I think Hugh Freeze needs the same thing at Auburn, man. Like, you know, that's 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 the formula. Yeah. All right, Jalen McLeod, Auburn lands one of their priority yeah. targets in the portal. We discuss what this means in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. If you were looking for a delicious snack, but you don't want all the sugar and calories, then you need to try the best-tasting protein bar ever. Built, they've got Built Bars, which are kind of similar to your traditional protein bars, and also Built Puffs where it's like chocolate, then inside of it is this protein-infused marshmallow. It's delicious, and they're good for you. If you want to look like Mike G, just super fit and super, super handsome, you need to check out Built.com. 
and load up on built bars. All these things are high in protein, low in calories, low in sugar, keto friendly if you're into that sort of thing. So check it all out. Built.com. Right. Mike G, Auburn Lands Edge, former App State Edge. Now he's going to be listed as a Jack linebacker. Um, Jalen McLeod. And there's a lot to like about this guy. He, he's got a history of achieving, um, you know, getting to the quarterback at the Sun Belt level at a high level. Um, and if you're into the analytics, which I know you, you bring up uh, PFF stuff fairly often, his PFF stuff is pretty crazy. His defensive grade is an 86.6, which is 27th in 862 edge players that pro football focus graded. It's pretty stinking good. And it's not like it's a small sample size. I mean, he played he played um, 232 passing snaps, 150 rushing snaps. So, I mean, he played almost, um, almost 400 snaps. So, you, you certainly love, love to see that. I think, Mike G, I think his role here is pass rush specialist, third and long. You take maybe a, a bigger defensive lineman off the field and you put him in because some places have him listed at 6'1", 230. Other places have him listed at 6'2", 220. Regardless, smaller than what this staff has gone after at the jack position so far. Keldrick Falk is a giant, you know, 6'6", 6'5", 260-ish is what they've looked at at Keldrick Falk. And with Elijah McAllister, this guy's smaller, which you would have to assume and hope that he's quicker. So, little bit different body type. And so, I'm assuming his role will be a little bit different as well. Uh, Jalen McLeod plays with an attitude. Um, you know, sure. You know, you look at his tape. Uh, this guy plays with an attitude. I think he's going to bring that in. Um, Zach, this is a this is a reminder that Dylan Brooks is gone. Dylan, you and I didn't you, get a chance you, to talk about. Are you this. sad about that? Yeah, yeah. You and I didn't get a chance to talk about this. You know, sorry, uh, I know you loved him. <laughs> Dylan Brooks is gone. Can you wear a Dylan Brooks jersey? Can we just pretend he stayed? Um, did, did they make those? <laughs> they might. If they made. I mean, see if you can get one. I'll wear one if you give me one. <laughs> so, uh, you know, listen, man, at the end of the day, uh, they needed to go out and recruit this position. Um, you know, off camera, you and I had a conversation about what this possibly means for Elijah McAllister. Um, you know, you've got to be stacked. You've got to rotate a bunch of guys on defense. Mm -hmm. You need guys who can come in and spell other guys. Um, you know, this is another piece in the process for Ron Roberts defense. Right. He has yeah. explicitly. Uh, stated over and over again how important that Jack position is. Bringing in guys who can do the job, who you feel like can do the job, was going to be important. So McLeod is going to be an int like an integral piece in filling the depth at that position, if not becoming a star at that position for Ron Roberts. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely going to be in the rotation. I don't think there's any way you can keep him off the field given the current state of the roster and the depth chart in that position. We'll talk about the, kind of the pecking order in a second. But I think... Um, I. <sighs> There's just a lot to like about all of this. And it, it seems like he committed Sunday night and just kind of waited until today to or yesterday to, to pop and, and kind of make everything official. But you gotta think, you gotta think he's got high expectations as far as okay, you know, I did it at App State, I did it at the Sun Belt level. Can I do it at an SEC level? And it looks like, you know, my favorite thing about this is when you look at his numbers, do you know, analytically, from PFF grades, his best game of the season? Do you know who it was against? I'll tell you. Can I tell you? Permission mm -hmm. to tell you? Yeah. It was against Texas A&M on the road Ooh, in really? College Station. It's not like they beat up on somebody. This guy, when he was faced with the toughest competition on the schedule, and A&M wasn't great, but still, you know, Auburn's got to play. Auburn's got to play A&M, right? I mean, Auburn's got to play a bunch of people that, you know, are – average SEC teams this season. Of all I mean, I think, the years. Right? I, but yeah. still, like you still, you take it. You, you, you certainly take it. I think it's a sign. He had a 92.2 defensive grade. He had five hurries. He had five quarterback hurries against Texas A&M. That, that's, 
Man, that's pretty solid. I mean, I yeah. would take that against any SEC team. Well, you and I both know there's no greater indication of future success than a PFF grade, right? Like, if you get a good PFF grade, you're guaranteed star. Uh, but, I mean, they get it right a lot. Like, yeah, look, I mean, I, I, know you're, I know you're being a little sarcastic there, and I'm cool right. with it. I'm totally cool with it. But, I mean, they get it right a lot. I mean, you look you know, at their top grades, and it's like, no, those guys are those guys are some of the best players in college football. I get it. Yeah, no, listen, the PFF grades are impressive, and they're definitely something to look at, right? Like, you know, uh, my expectations for him are tempered. I, I expect him to be a piece in the puzzle, right? Um, sure. And I think that those grades suggest that he can be a very important piece in the puzzle. So uh, Jalen McLeod, man, it's been slow in the portal. I think this is good news for Auburn. And they're going to need to continue to pick up pieces like this over the next few weeks or until the portal you know, period closes and, you know, get guys in who can help immediately. So, you mm -hmm. know, year one for Hugh Freeze is about filling pieces that can come in and make you the best football team you can be in year one. Right. That is his job. Jalen McLeod is that kind of player for him, them on defense. Would you say that this could make the weather a little bit more Mick Cloudy for opposing quarterbacks? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think okay, they, cool. they might have a big problem with uh, <laughs> Jalen McLeod. So, so you got a mix sack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mix sandwich. Right. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> so oh, people are gonna hate that. People are gonna hate that, Mike G. Man, Discord's gonna blow it with hell. Yeah. Goodness gracious, Mick Cloudy Day for opposing quarterbacks. <laughs> um, okay, I want to discuss, I guess, just the impact on the roster and how. I think you could do, now that you've got this extra jack that I think you feel comfortable playing, there's some fun things you can do regarding alignment. And I want to talk about that in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. I want to encourage you to join the Locked on Auburn Discord. It is free. All you have to do is click the link in the episode description down below. So all of a sudden now, when I, when I first saw this news, you think, okay, who are winners and losers in this situation? Well, there weren't really any guys behind them because Hart doesn't have a whole lot of edge players. And so all of a sudden, you're like, okay, does this impact Elijah McAllister? And then you start looking at their heights and their weights. And I said that a second ago. And it's like, no, I think I, I don't think you can play Jalen McLeod consistently on first and second down against teams that have a tendency to run on early downs. I just don't think you can do it because I think with that size in the SEC, I think you'll get pushed around. Could be wrong. That's just kind of my gut feeling on this. So all of a sudden, when you're third and six and longer and you think the opposing team's going to pass the football, all of a sudden you can take Elijah off the field, put Jalen McLeod on, and so many people are like, well, what about, what about Keldrick Falk? And just talking to folks, it seems like Keldrick Falk is going to get more reps at strong side defensive end than we originally thought due to the situation of Jeffrey Inbaugh leaving. And I think there's a big gap between Marcus Harris at defensive end and everyone else. So all of a sudden, Mike G, this pass rush situation, let's say you, let's say you go with Auburn's base that we think it's going to be, which is you start Elijah McAllister at Jack. Then you've got Jason Jones and Justin Rogers in the middle. You're two big guys. And then your defensive end is Marcus Harris. All of a sudden now, you can take Jason or Justin Rogers off the field and move Marcus Harris inside, which we've, we've seen him excel at that spot consistently throughout his career so far. And then you can sub in Elijah McAllister for a Jalen McLeod, who's a better pass rusher, I think. We'll certainly see how it translates to the SEC, but I think he will be. And you can put Keldrick Falk at strong side defensive end. And all of a sudden, that's a really tricky situation that you have to block. Yeah, so it is really tricky, I think. And um, uh, they were they're, look, based on what we saw on A Day, <laughs> right? Um, I think maybe the defensive line has a little bit of work to do um, in terms of what they're doing down there, uh, particularly in the run game. Uh, but, you know. The coaching staff doesn't feel that way. I mean, yeah. most of those runs came against the third team because it was all Sean Jackson, it was three sure. versus three. And then I'm just telling you what they talk about in the meeting room. And it's all yeah. about like them losing contain. And it's like, that's not all. Sometimes it's the Jack. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but I don't yeah. think the run defense is as bad as people were making it out to be. Yeah. It's listen, man. And talking to Jason Jones after, you know, eight, a, you know, they weren't have Those guys weren't happy with how they performed. Certainly. Right. Um, as a group. And, uh, you know, this is going to be, again, the alignments I expect them to play with. So, you know, what you're talking about with the different alignments with the players, um, I expect them to play with that. Um, and 
try to come up with something because the, the same way that Hugh Freeze is developing what they're going to do on offense, Ron Roberts has indicated that they're still somewhat developing a plan based on personnel for how they're going to run deep, the defensive side of the ball too. So his system is not set in stone just yet. I think getting players in gives him a little bit more information about how he plans to run that defense um, and you know how he plans to rush guys off the edge, how they plan to play the run you know, and, and, and rush the passer. So uh, it, it'll be interesting to see. There's still a lot in flux, you know, listen, it's always, I love when you do the hypothetical, like, you know, Hey, this is the guy here. This is a guy here. You know, we think this guy fits here. Um, and, you know, Ron Roberts is, is just going to have to see where these guys fit. You know, when you get a guy after the spring, Zach, and he hasn't had a chance to play next to those guys, you know, um, and do some things in this defense, it's, it's really difficult to evaluate where he fits. So, um, I would see it being a situation where these guys come in and they rotate them in, to, they, they get them into the rotation, right? And as they start to get more game time and more playing time, and they get to you know get a feel for what Auburn is doing, uh, you might see you know one of them end up being the guy by the end of the season. So uh, it, it, it's going to be really interesting to watch, I think, on defense, um, you know what they do along that D line and particularly at the Jack position. Yeah. So. Don't you think position matters, though? I mean, I think this guy's going to be asked to rush the passer, and that's about it. Like, I, I don't think that's really a chemistry thing. I don't think that's really a playbook thing. Uh, well, I, mean, I think I think you need to do alignment stuff and all. You need to learn where to line up and, you know, when you're subbing and situational stuff. But for the most part, I mean, this isn't a middle linebacker or a safety. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. But, you know, again, we'll see. I just want to see what Ron Roberts is going to do. You know, I want to see what the plan is on defense for real, for real. And if they feel like they can go after the quarterback as much as they probably are going to want to. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, depending on who you're playing, your opponent has a lot to do with that strategy. Uh, you know, Auburn is going to have to be fluid on defense. Right. So it's not going to be a one size fits all. It's going to be a, you know, does this guy fit the position, you know, uh, the, in the game plan that we have this day against this opponent based on who's at quarterback and what their run game looks like and what their offensive line looks like. So uh, it's a lot of different moving parts there, but you know, ultimately I think they'll figure it out. And then last thing, I mean, my biggest question has been, how is this defense going to rush the passer? That's been my biggest concern. This yeah. is part of that puzzle. Like you said, I don't know if it's necessarily going to, you know, add two sacks on the season. I, I I don't know. I don't know. Is he two sacks better than, you know, giving more reps to Elijah McAllister? Right. Or Pelger? I don't know. It's impossible to know, but you got to feel a little bit better, um, get a little bit deeper in that position, but I, I'd still like another one, you know, Ukwu, the, the guy from James Madison, I'd love to add him still, but we'll, um, we'll I like see. him a lot. I like Ukwu a lot. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot to like about him. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to be able to get out. You can't leave these DBs on an Island this season. That's for sure. Um, and so you've got to be able to get after the passer. I think that's some a place where, where Auburn has waned on defense the last few years, where they'll play great defense, but in key at key times in the game, they are unable to get pressure on the quarterback, and it's killed them. Yeah. It's absolutely killed them. So it's definitely one of those things that they need to solve uh, and quickly. Yep. Good DBs go a long way, but they can only cover for, for you know, so long, six man. It's seconds, hard. You know, that, you that, that, then. Backpedal for so long, Zach. Yeah, that, that'd be All tough. Right. That'd be tough, especially against the these receivers in this league. That's just brutal. Mike G, how can people find you, hear you, love you, watch you, all that stuff? Uh, check us out on YouTube. Uh, we've got a lot of great things going this summer, so keep watching out for our interview series, Building Reports, coming at you. We're at you guys at the Morning Drop every morning, at the War Report, every social media platform, Zach. Check us out. You can follow my socials at Z Blackerby and read all of my written work at AuburnDaily.com. We will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.